Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Maria Elena Salinas. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Muy buenas tardes a todos. ¿Cómo están? Yes, I'm warning you, this is going to be bilingual speech, so bear with me now. I, I would like to say how happy I am to join all of you today, and of course how proud I am to be here with former First Lady Michelle Obama for the official kickoff of the Week in Action for the When We All Vote campaign. You know, there's more than 2,000 events that are scheduled for this week across the country to deliver our message. Our vote matters. Now, I'm here as a partner with Mi Familia Vota, my family vote. And we want to remind citizens of the power that we have when we all vote. So, we have to use that power. Usa tu poder. You know, I know that sometimes we get a little bit frustrated and we don't vote because you know, we think our vote doesn't matter, or we can't find the time to do it, or we're confused about the process. But it's time to change that. Exactly. I'll tell you, while I'm here, you would imagine that I would be possibly on that podium because I am a journalist. So, as a journalist, I have covered nine presidential elections and nine midterm elections, and I have witnessed firsthand the growth of the Latino community and the strength of their political power. Of course, it wasn't always like that. I remember that when I began my career in Spanish language media in the early 80s, don't start counting, <laughs> Latinos were not voting in part because they felt disenfranchised from mainstream America. So I knew since then that my mission as a journalist, and my passion as a journalist, and my responsibility will be the political empowerment of Latinos. So here I am to remind Latinos and everyone else that we are Americans too. With Mi Familia Vota, we're sending a very clear message to Latino voters. Usa tu poder, usa tu voto, use your power use your vote, we need to stop feeling like outsiders, a feeling that has deepened at a time of harsh divisions in our country. Yes, our country. You know, the line between us and them seems to be more defined than ever as a result of some of the political rhetoric that we have been exposed to. But if there's one time when we can blur the lines between them and us, it's now, in election time, because we're all Americans, regardless of the color of our skin, or the accent in our voice, or the texture in our hair. So why should we let someone else decide for us who should be our leaders or by what laws we should be governed? We can't let that happen. As a daughter of Mexican immigrant parents, born in California, I'm proud of my cultural heritage, and I'm very proud to be a citizen of the United States. And I understand clearly the power of my vote. I hope you do too. <laughs> now, if you allow me, and I'm asking permission, I would like to say the same thing I just said in Spanish. We have a lot of Latino voters here, and so bear with me. Estoy muy, muy orgullosa de unir fuerzas con mi familia Bota en nuestra campaña para motivar a los latinos a que se registren para votar y que ejerzan su derecho al voto el 6 de noviembre. Y me siento muy honrada de compartir esta lucha con la ex primera dama de los Estados Unidos, Michelle Obama, en su campaña nacional, cuando todos votamos, when we all vote. Les cuento por qué estoy aquí. Como periodista, a mí me ha tocado cubrir las últimas nueve elecciones presidenciales y las nueve elecciones de medio término, y yo he sido testigo presencial del de crecimiento de la comunidad latina y la fuerza de su poder político. Aunque no siempre fue así, hubo una época en los latinos no votaban porque se sentían desconectados. Pero ahora esto puede cambiar. 
Esta campaña es un mensaje muy claro a los votantes latinos en momentos en que muchos se sienten desconectados como resultado de la profunda división que estamos viviendo en nuestro país. Exactamente, nuestro país. La línea entre ellos y nosotros parece más definida que nunca, pero si hay un momento el que no, en el que nosotros podemos borrar esa línea entre ellos y nosotros es ahora, en las elecciones, porque todos somos ciudadanos americanos sin importar el color de nuestra piel, la textura de nuestro pelo o el acento en nuestro hablar. Así es que no debemos permitir que otros decidan por nosotros quiénes deben de ser nuestros líderes o bajo qué leyes debemos ser gobernados. Como hija de inmigrantes mexicanos nacida en California, me siento muy orgullosa de mi herencia cultural y de ser ciudadana de los Estados Unidos. Y estoy muy consciente de la importancia y el poder de mi voto. Espero que ustedes también. So please, never forget the power of your voice and the power of your vote. If you haven't already registered, register now and show up on November 6th. And thank you. And join me in thanking Michelle Obama for leading us across all communities to deliver the message that when we all vote, we win. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Anne Hamasco Bartolome. Hello, Las Vegas. My name is Anne Hamasco Bartolome, and I am honored to be here today. I am a, prou a proud voter registration volunteer with APALA and ACDC. And as of August 24, 2018, I am proud to say that after 16 years, I am officially a U.S. citizen. a proud Filipino American. Thank you. And when we are finally allowed to cast our ballots in Nevada, I will be a proud voter for the first time. I understand the importance of being civically engaged, and for 15 years, even though I could not vote, I knew I had a part to play. That's why for 15 years, I have volunteered to register voters across our great city. with a focus on registering Filipino Americans. But during that time, it always felt like something was missing. Despite helping countless Filipino Americans register to vote, I couldn't vote myself. But now I can. And for the first time, I feel like I truly belong. Yeah, true. So when I go to the polls for the first time, I'll be voting for my daughter's future. I'll be voting for 
a secure retirement. And I'll be voting because I love this state and I love our country. So to my fellow Nevadans, join me in volunteering to, re to register to vote. Join me in casting your ballots during the early vote, which will take place between October 20th and November 2nd, or on election day on November 6th. Join me in giving power to our voices at the ballot box, because when we all vote, we all rise again. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kelly McCreary and Lena Paria. Hi! Hey, I'm Lana Paria. I'm Kelly McCreary. Hello, Las Vegas. <laughs> I could not be prouder to be standing here with my girl, Kelly McCreary. <laughs> Kelly? Have I ever told you how much I admire you? You graduated early from Yale. You were the head of cardiothoracic no, surgery no, no, at no, 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 that's, um, that's not me. That's, that's, that's Maggie Pierce. Oh, right, that's right. Maggie Pierce from Grey's Anatomy. It's not me. Right, of course. Yeah. Well, in real life and in all seriousness, you are a fierce advocate. Oh. You always stand up for what you believe in, and you are so inspiring. Oh, well. That's really kind of you to say, Lana. Um, but let's be honest, you are the real queen here. Come on. From an Alma Award to a Teen Choice Award, you've been recognized for your incredible work on screen, but you've also been recognized for your incredible work off of it, for your, huma your humanitarian work on a number of important causes. Thank you. <laughs> I'm honored to share the stage with you. And I think I speak for both of us when I say that we are so thrilled to have followed Anne. Yes. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Anne, for your story, for sharing your story with all of us. Um, Kelly, yeah. I have a question. What made you decide to become an actor? Uh, well, I became an actor, that's easy, uh, because I, I really believe in the power of a good story. Um, I just, I feel like when you listen to someone else's story, you walk a mile in their shoes and you remember that we're, we're all much more alike than we are different. That is true. No matter where we come from, whether it's Brooklyn or Milwaukee. Hey, Milwaukee. Or <laughs> right here in Las Vegas. We all want the same things, right? Yeah a good education, a government that works for us, our voices to be heard. Yeah. And do you know how to make sure you get it? Uh, well, I'll tell you how you don't get it. Hmm. You don't get it by sitting around and waiting for everything to fix itself. <laughs> Damn right. No. Right? You get out and you vote. Yeah. See, every time we opt out of voting, we give away our power. Lana, hmm. are you willing to give your power away? Um, no way. <laughs> I know what's best for my family and my future. I pay close attention to how changes in policy might change my life and the lives of those I love. Yeah, me too. I, I don't want anyone else to speak for me. And if we didn't have real power, people wouldn't go to the lengths they do to stop us from exercising that power. That's right, because, right? In case you haven't noticed, they're counting on us to do just that, to sit this election out. Don't do that, no! No, no don't way. exercise your rights! Do not give your power away when we cast our ballots. We are capable of making big change happen. That's true. So, when we do everything we can to make sure that our friends and family show up to the polls too, we're unstoppable. Yeah, right? 
So let's show everyone we mean business. Okay, everyone, please take out your cell phones. Everybody take out your phones. So you have to stop recording us for a moment. <laughs> and that means you too, Kelly. Yes, 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 here we go, okay. All right, here we are. Now open up your messaging, your messaging app, mm -hmm. click on that. You're gonna start a new message to the number 97779. Is everyone following me? 97779. And you are gonna type out this phrase, we all vote. Mm -hmm. And try to make it all one word if you can. If there's a space, don't worry, but try to make it all one word. Is everyone doing that with me? We all vote. We all vote, and that will make sure you are ready to vote. Touch send. Send. I hit send, did everyone else hit send? Yes. I, haven't, I don't hear everyone. All right, don't be playing games. All right. All right, I'll good. Vote. And then, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right, great. And like I said, it will make sure that um, you are all ready to vote. Um, yes, okay, right. Now, just, just, as a, just one more check, just turn to your neighbor and make sure that they did it too. Just whoever you're standing next to. Yeah, just, just ask, sure did you do it? Message. Did you do it? Get the validation. Okay. All right. <laughs> and, also, and also, if you're gonna go home and tell somebody to do it, when you get home, just say, yay. Yeah, good, okay, great, 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 great. And great. I did it, so right, that's easy. Did it. Great. And to those of you who are newly registered to vote, congratulations. Woo! And those of you who are volunteering to get other people registered, keep it up. Let's get as many eligible voters as we can to those polls. Thank you all. What you're doing is making our communities better. You are making our democracy stronger. Yes, and together we can achieve anything. Because when we all vote, we, we all, all do, do better. better. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Keegan Michael Key. Discipline. You! Alright, okay. That's okay. What is going on, Las Vegas? Oh my gosh, thank you so much, everybody, for coming out. This is. Oh, no, yep. Yes, you are officially the most attractive crowd I've ever seen in my entire life. Have I ever seen in my life? Had to come all the way to Nevada. No, I'm sorry, is it Nevada or Nevada? Nevada, thank you. Now I know. Now I'll never forget, ever. Ladies and gentlemen, before I say anything else to you, I want to thank Kyle Learman, and I want to thank Punya Krishnapa, and the whole team at When We All Vote, uh, and especially Michelle Obama for creating this organization. Yes. Now, now many of you may know me from my Comedy Central show with my friend Jordan Peele. It is called Key and Peele, in case you don't know. And in one of our most popular sketches, I played a character named Luther. Do, do, you, know, you, do you know this guy? Do you know Luther? Okay. He's otherwise known as President Obama's anger translator, right? And Luther was that guy who said all the things that a very measured and thoughtful person was thinking, but chose not to say out loud. Correct. correct, thank you baby. Correct, my girl over here says. She is correct. <laughs> Folks, we are at a very, 
very interesting time in our country where I am sure many of you out here have been experiencing, let's call it, mild frustration. <laughs> we'll just call it that. But some of you, some of you out here have held your tongue or you chose to be diplomatic instead of sharing the thing you were thinking. And to those three people that are out here, I applaud you. <laughs> to everybody else that's out here who, who needs a Luther, I apologize personally for not being there for you, okay? Because I'm not going to lie, I mean, sometimes I turn on the news and I think, I am Luther, and I need a Luther. <laughs> but I'm here today to tell you guys there is a better way. There's a better way. Do you want to know what it is? Don't just use your words. You register and you vote. We don't just talk about it. We take action. What we're doing here today is we're helping people turn that anger or that issue that's important to you or that fight into action, all right? And it, it is a pretty, pretty simple thing to do. You register and you vote, right? You what? This side, what do you do? And, and then after that, what do you do on this side? Oh. We register and we vote. That's it, That's it baby. We, oh, let's, okay, it's Sunday. Let's have a little church. <laughs> when we all vote, we translate our outrage yeah. and our passion yeah. and our hope yeah. and our dreams yeah. into change. Yeah. Well, you guys are good. I used to live in a neighborhood, and there was an intersection in that neighborhood. It was an intersection between a very large thoroughfare and a very small private street. And there was no stoppage there, no stop sign, no stop light. And we had lots and lots, and I mean several accidents take place at that intersection. And we had a couple of fatalities take place at that intersection. And people didn't talk about it. The people in our neighborhood, they got together, and they voted to get a stop light at that intersection. They voted. Their voices were heard, a stoplight was put up, and positive change was made. That's something that concretely took place because people voted. It happens at a local level, it can happen at a general level, and it should happen at a national level. It is our right, it is a gift as Americans. And I'm going to tell you all, it seems that in this country right now that we're at an intersection. And the point I'm trying to make is that this November, we do have a choice. We have a choice to step up and to vote and to let our voices, every single voice in this room, be heard. I don't care what anybody else says to you. Your voice matters. The system works. Change is possible. We all... All of us, I, would, I, wish I, I wish I had time, but maybe Michelle's got to come out here, I don't have the time. Or I would count every single one of you because every single one of you have that power. We can all change things for the better. That's what we want all of you guys to remember this November. And that is why, why, why I'm working with Michelle Obama on her national nonpartisan organization when we all vote, okay? Because we are on a mission to change the culture around voting. This is something we should be doing as much as we breathe. It's our right to do this. There are so many countries in this world where people don't get to do this. There are countries in this world, there are brand new democracies in this world where people would die, die to get to the ballot box. Walk past bullets, walk past knives and guns. They would do anything to vote. We should be voting. This is America! That's what we do! We vote up in here! We vote up in here! I 
join this organization to increase participation, not only in this election, but in every other election to come. So now I'm going to ask all of you guys who didn't get your phone out fast enough, that might be six of you, because I know y'all are fired up. So if you've not yet taken out your phone, please take out your phone. I'm assuming, ma'am, that you're filming me, which means you've already done it. She's going, yes, I've already, she's like, yes, I've already, I've already done it. It's so easy, guys. All you have to do is text one word, we all vote, to nine. 7779. We all vote. That goes in the bottom line. 9779 goes in the top line. Bam! Hit send. Get yourself. Get your friends. Get your neighbors. Get your relatives. Get your communities registered to vote. Turn your anger. And more importantly, folks, turn your passion. Turn your hope into action. Thank you so much. Thank you guys, Nevada. God bless you guys. Take care. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Emily Zamora.
my name is Emily Prasad Zamora, and I am the Executive Director of Silver State Voices. We are an organization dedicated to ensuring that people of color, folks between the ages of 18 to 34, and single women are represented in their democracy. Today, Nevadans, we are here to rally. But in the next two weeks, Nevadans, we need to get to work! <laughs> Voter registration is the first step in civic engagement. I've been registering voters since 2012, and I know it is so easy to do. Because I know it's so easy to do, I have a challenge for each and every person in this room today. I want you all from today until the voter registration deadline to ensure that you are going to register at least five people within your networks. <laughs> so you may be asking me, Emily, when is the voter registration deadline? That's a great question because Nevada actually has three voter registration deadlines. So let's go through them. The first voter registration deadline is October 9th. So if you want to register with a paper voter registration form, that's the way, by, you have to do it by that date. If you want to register to vote in person at the elections department, you can do that by October 16th. And the last method of registering to vote in Nevada is online voter registration. And that needs to be done by October 18th. So, since you all are going to become voter registration experts, I have a couple of tips for you all when you're talking to people. One, make sure that you're asking people to register to vote by texting 97779 um, and sending we all vote and they can get more information to register to vote that way or by going to whenweallvote.org. Two, volunteer with some of the most amazing organizations here in Las Vegas doing voter registration, like Asian Community Development Council, <laughs> Chispa Nevada, <laughs> Mi Familia Vota, <laughs> Nevada Conservation League, and we can't forget Plant Parenthood. <laughs> Three, Make sure that you're asking your friends and family if their voter registration is up to date. Make sure that they're registered to vote at their current address. Did you know that the move rate in the state of Nevada is 21%? So there's a big chance that people may not be registered at their current address. Also ask them, do you need to do a party affiliation change or a name change? Folks, the message is, is that there's a, been a lot of people throughout our history that have fought and fought to have people that look just like you and just like me to not have the right to vote. And those people have also had to face people that look just like us that have fought for the right to vote. So we can't stay home this election. There is too much at stake, Nevada. We have to go out and vote. So please make sure you come and join me on November 6th and register and go out and vote in this election. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to introduce Mrs. Michelle Obama, please welcome Erin Ibarra. How are we feeling? Are we in Las Vegas? It doesn't sound like it. How are we feeling? That's what I like to hear. So first and foremost, thank you all for being here today. Uh, the energy in this crowd is electrifying and it really what motivates us to go out and get people registered to vote and get them motivated to go out to the polls. So a little bit about myself. My name is Aroni Barra. I'm the Mi Familia Vota Nevada Youth Organizer here in Nevada. I'm a born and raised Nevadan, and I'm a political science student at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Go Rebels! So we all have that one person that we care about, that one person that we can't live without, the person we can count on no matter what the situation is. 
My father was that person for me. I couldn't picture my life without him until I had to. My father was deported when I was eight years old. That changed my life forever. We tried to keep our family together. My eight-month-year-old sister, my mom and I moved to Mexico, but ended up coming back after just a year and a half. When we came back, my mom tried her best to keep things normal. But things weren't normal. I didn't have a dad. And I was confused, and I was scared. But I can tell you, 12 years later, I'm not scared anymore. I'm not scared. I'm angry. And it's that anger that motivates me to go out to my community every single day and talk to as many people as I can and knock on as many doors as I can and call as many people as I can and tell them, hey, it's time to vote. If you can vote, you should vote. Voting. I voted for the first time in 2016, and it was one of the best feelings I ever had. I voted for the second time in the primaries, and it was equally as satisfying. And I can't wait to feel that same feeling these upcoming elections, and the next elections, and the next elections, and the next elections. Whether it be state, federal, or local, you can bet I'm going to be at the polls. And if you can vote, I expect to see each and every one of you at the polls there with me. If you can vote, vote. And that's why I'm so proud to be a part of organizations like Mi Familia Vota, like When We All Vote, because we focus on organizing on the ground. We talk to community members. We tell them about their rights. We let them know when it's time to go vote, and that time is now. And that is why it's my pleasure and honor to introduce the founder and co-chair of When We All Vote, someone who's on the ground just as much as any of us, one of the most inspirational women in this country, former First Lady Michelle Obama. and take in what Aaron just said. I mean, I was backstage almost crying over the passion that young man has. You know, and that's, that's what we have to remember is that that's at stake every election in this election. So I am proud of young people like Aaron who is taking that loss and turning it into something powerful. And that's the choice we all have to make again and again. So let's give our own a big round of applause. So proud of him. I, I also want to thank uh, Principal Jones uh, here at the Chaparral High School and all of the administrators for allowing us to be here tonight. Uh, but most of all, I want to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy lives on a Sunday to come here and be a part of this effort. I love you all too, love you, truly. So, so we know why we're here. <laughs> Six weeks until election day. But I'm not here to campaign for any candidate. I'm not here to tell anyone how to vote. I'm here today to talk about why voting matters and why we all need to get registered and ready to vote this November. 
And I have to tell you that this all feels a little too familiar to me, you know? I mean, I have, I'm having a bit of weird deja vu at the moment. I haven't done this in a while. Because sadly though, this isn't the first time I've talked about the importance of voting. You know, over the past decade, really, over the past decade in election after election, I have traveled across the country telling folks the same thing. Voting is a fundamental right. And our vote is our voice. I've said it again and again. It's our way to have a say in the issues we care about. It's how the democracy works. It's our stake in our children's future. I've said it again and again. Nothing has really changed. It still matters. And I'm not the only one who's traveling around talking about this issue. My husband, once again, we like him. And, and, and trust me, he was looking forward to putting his feet up, <laughs> kicking back, and not having to do this again and again and again. But he's out there. And we've got a whole slew of community leaders and athletes and celebrities who have been talking about voting again. Every two years, we have all kinds of registration drives and rallies like this one. And thousands of people, like many of you, work your hearts out to get people to the polls on Election Day. But after all that effort, here's where we end up. Still, in presidential elections, only about half of eligible people bother to vote. That's in a presidential election. In midterm elections, like the one coming up in November, when no one is running for president, the turnout is even lower. It's, it's the truth. That's where we are. And right now, one in five eligible people in this country are not even registered to vote. And so here we are. And I have to tell you, I've been asking myself, well, what's going on? You know, what, what is going on? Why are some folks still not showing up to vote? And, and I know it's not because people don't care. That I know. Yeah, you know, we all care about what happens in our communities, right? It's, especially when things go wrong, we care. And it's not that folks don't have opinions on the issues, right? <laughs> I know that at kitchen tables and in barber shops and beauty shops and sports bars and diners all across the nation, People have a whole lot to say about the state of this country. We all have opinions, right? Every parent has an opinion about their child's school. You know, whether there's enough resources to ensure that their child is getting the best education possible. Every parent wants their kids to be safe. Whether they're at school or at a concert. And we all have opinions on issues like health care, the economy, how much we're paying in taxes. But even with all that said, there are still millions of people who think that voting isn't relevant to their lives. Or they think that voting won't make a difference. Or they think the system is rigged, so why bother? Or maybe they feel overwhelmed, you know, like the issues are too complicated and that politics is just too ugly. So they just don't want to get involved. Some folks are real busy, you know? They're like, hey, I got so much going on, I'm just trying to get my kids to daycare, trying to get to work, maybe get some sleep. They just feel like they don't have time for anything else in their lives. And, and trust me, I, I get it. I get being busy. And I definitely get feeling frustrated. Because believe me, I am frustrated too. I am sick of all the chaos and, and the nastiness of our politics. It's exhausting. And frankly, it's depressing. 
So I understand wanting to shut it all out and just go on and just try to live your life, take care of your family in peace. But here's the problem. While some folks are frustrated and tuned out and staying home on election day, trust me, other folks are showing up. Democracy continues with or without you. They're voting in every election from city council to governor to president because the folks who are voting know the impact that the leaders that they pick can have on every single part of our lives. You know, those sheriffs that we elect, they decide how our streets are policed. The school board members we vote on, they determine how our kids' schools are run. The mayors we, we send to City Hall, they can fix those crumbling roads in the public transportation system or not. <laughs> the folks who represent us in Congress pass laws on everything from job creation to whether we go to war. And those are just the candidates on the ballot. This November, across America, there are also what are known as ballot initiatives on everything from supporting housing for veterans, whether we prom promote renewable energy, to improving facilities for our senior citizens. Those things are on the ballot. And the people who show up to the polls this November will decide what happens on every single one of those issues. So really, when you think about it, not voting is like letting your grandma pick your clothes out. <laughs> now, no offense to grandma. My mom is with me today. And we, and we love grandma. <laughs> I, I love when grandma comes to visit. I love spending time with it. I love eating her pie, eating her chicken. <laughs> but how many people here, especially those of you under 30, would let your grandma decide what you wear to the club? <laughs> how many of you would drive the car that grandma chose for you to drive? or live in an apartment with furniture that grandma picked out for you. All jokes aside, you know. <laughs> My point being, and I'm being funny, is that not many of you would want somebody who's not you, and doesn't live in the same space as you, doesn't see the world in the same way as you, even when they love you and you love them, you wouldn't let them do that for you. Because you know that grandma's choices for you are not the choices you'd make for yourself. What grandma thinks is good for you isn't necessarily what you think is good for you. With all the love in the world. And you certainly wouldn't go to some random stranger in the street somewhere, somebody who doesn't know anything about your life, someone who doesn't care about your community, doesn't understand it, doesn't know it, and ask that person to pick your doctor or whether have that person figure out whether your daycare is safe or whether the water you're drinking is clean. You wouldn't expect somebody else to take care of your stuff. But when you don't vote, and that's the thing I, I don't understand, when you don't vote, that's exactly what you're doing. You're letting other people make some really key decisions about the life you're going to live, the place you're going to live, how it's going to work out for you. You're just saying, you do it. <laughs> and you may not like what they decide. You might not like living with the consequences of other people's choices. But that's what happens when you stay home. You are essentially putting your future in the hands of others. And the truth is, that's exactly what some folks are hoping that you'll do. You know, they're hoping that you'll just let them make these important decisions for you. Just sit back, let me figure this out for you. There are people out there right now who are making it harder to vote. But we have to kind of sit with that for a moment because you've got to ask yourselves in this democracy, why on earth would anybody, regardless of party, want to make it harder for people to participate in the democracy? But that's happening right now all over the place. They're closing down polling places. 
They're making it harder for volunteers to get people registered. They're finding all kinds of ways to keep you at home, hoping that when you hear about all those things, you'll just give up and just think that voting is just too hard, that it'll take hours of your time, that it requires some special skills and expertise that you, you don't have. That's what they want. And you can see how those kind of tactics can start make, make pe people start feeling like this is just too hard for me. We all know someone who feels like that, again, regardless of party. We all know someone who thinks that way. An uncle, a neighbor, someone you grew up with. And that's why we're here today. Because we, we know that it's going to be up to folks like us who will come out on a Sunday for a rally like this to help, to help those folks out, to help tell the truth about voting. And the truth is, is that registering to vote just isn't hard. It doesn't take long. It's, it's just a few minutes. And once you're registered in many states, including here in Nevada, you can vote by mail. <laughs> I, I do that all the time. I vote by mail in my house, in my, in, my, in my jeans, in my sneakers, comfortable, not rushed, not hunkered over. Fill out the table, the, the ballot at your kitchen table, and just drop it in the mail. And it works. It's just that easy. And voting in person can be just as fast. In fact, in 2016, the average length of time voters waited in line at a polling place was about 11 minutes. Just 11 minutes, and that's an average, right? Some, some places it was even shorter than that. Just think about, you spend 11 minutes on your phone, you know, watching videos on a given day. You spend 11 minutes choosing the Instagram filters. To text your boo, right? <laughs> so the thing we just have to tell ourselves, we have 11 minutes to do a lot of stuff. And if we have 11 minutes to do stuff that does nothing for our daily lives, then we've got 11 minutes to vote. And trust me. And, and here's something I just want to make sure people understand. Voting does not require any kind of special expertise. You know, you don't need to be, ha have some fancy degree to be qualified to vote. You don't have to read every news article to be qualified to vote. You know what you need to be qualified to vote? You need to be a citizen. You know, you need to be a part of this country. You need to have opinions about the issues in your community. That's what qualifies you to vote. Caring about your kids' future qualifies you to be a voter. Wanting a say in what happens in this country qualifies you to be a voter. So don't be intimidated. Don't let somebody intimidate you from being a part of this process. I've been voting since I was 18 years old. And trust me, I didn't know nothing about nothing at 18 years old, right? But what you do know is what you care about. For all the young people, you do know you have a voice. You do have opinions about what goes on. That qualifies you to vote. And it is not that hard. Plenty of folks of all ages are registering to vote for the very first time. And that should be a source of pride. You know? That should be as important as getting your driver's license, right? So those young people know that they want to have a say about what goes on in their neighborhoods. And they know it's time for a change. That's how folks all over this country are making change in their communities. Just give you an example. There's a little county in Missouri, Boone County. There, there were families struggling to get their children the mental health care they needed. Hundreds of families had been requesting counseling service for their kids, but the resources weren't there. So the folks in Boone County came together. They came up with a plan to fund children's mental health care. They gathered up signatures they needed to get their issue on the ballot, and then they got out and voted. And today, just a few years later, in Boone County, they're providing counseling for kids who need it. 
They're doing mental health screenings for every child in that county. And they're training teachers and child care advocates to better support kids with mental health challenges. And this all happened because folks in that one county, in one part of this nation, believed that their kids deserved better. And they knew that their vote was the way to make it happen. So don't let anybody tell you that that vote doesn't matter. Those folks in Boone County should, could have just sat back and said, oh my God, this is awful. Our kids aren't being treated well. What a shame. Everything feels so hopeless. So I'm just going to stay home. They could have done that. But they realized that it's actually the other way around, how our democracy works. They realize that the only way to make change in this country is to get out and vote for the change you're looking for. And when they showed up to vote, things happened. And the same thing can happen on every issue everywhere in this country. That's how change happens in America. So our vote matters. It always does, but only if we use that vote. And let's just imagine, what if this year we actually did that? What if this year every eligible American decided to step up and be a voter? What if each of us found at least one candidate that we liked on a ballot, one initiative that we cared about? And that was enough to just get us into the polling place. Let's just think about that for a minute. What can actually happen when we all vote? For starters, the folks we elect will have to listen to us and do something about the issues we care about because we put them there. And the next election, they'll know we can either keep them there or vote them out. There's power in that. That is the power when we all vote. When we all vote, imagine the kind of schools we can demand for our kids, schools that aren't falling apart. Schools that don't have to hold bake sales to buy textbooks. Schools that give all our kids, and I mean all of our kids, education worthy of their promise. When we all vote, imagine what we can demand for our communities. Safer streets, cleaner water, after school programs for all of our kids, all the things we've been wishing and hoping for. When we all vote, imagine the kind of leaders we can elect. Leaders who share our values. Leaders who understand in the deepness of their bones the struggles and hopes of all of us, leaders who want the best for all of our families, not just a handful, but all of us. That's how democracy works here in America. We get the leaders we vote for. We get the policies we vote for. And when we don't vote, that's when we wind up with government of, by, and for other people. And that's not what we want. So listen up. If you are not registered to vote, please just get registered. Please. I'll say it again. Please just get registered. I don't care who you vote for. Be registered. Be involved in this. Don't be intimidated by it. Don't think you can't make it happen. Just be registered. And you've heard to do that today, just take out your phone and text, we all vote to 97779. Do, you can do that right now. And you can learn how to register online or request a registration form with a prepaid envelope. <laughs> Be sent right to your house. Don't even need a stamp. Fill it out, have it done. And if you are registered to vote, I want you to reach out to everyone you know, whoever is in your life. Because here's the thing, this is what we've learned from all the studies. Look, people don't really want to hear from celebrities and athletes and famous people because they don't know us. They don't necessarily trust that I really care. Maybe some people maybe have learned over the years that I actually do care, but, <laughs> but, but here's the thing. In all fairness, people listen to the people in their lives, right? Family members. You know you got a brother, an uncle, somebody who likes you, who respects you. You know, you got colleagues, friends, young people here. You all know you all have a couple of people who listen to you over a bunch of stuff you don't know nothing about. 
you can have a bigger influence over the people in your lives, more so than I can, more so than one rally can. So for the people who are registered, who are here, who are focused, do not take for granted that getting a few more people registered and getting them to the polls won't make a difference because it will, it absolutely will. I say this in election after election because so few people vote. Elections in precinct by precinct can be decided by 10 votes, 20 votes. I mean, really, 50 votes. Presidential elections in districts are decided by 50 people who decided not to. It is that small of a margin. And people just uh, feel like, well, it must be millions and millions of votes. No, no. When so few people inv get involved in the democratic process, the people who are involved have way more control over it. So don't ever underestimate the power of pulling more people in. So we want you to go out there and find other people. people that we trust, then people have to vote. Because you can't vote some of the time and then sit out. You know, we saw that happen. We experienced that. Where we had a great president. and said, well, I did my part, I voted once, I'm done, I'm out. And I'm just telling you that democracy doesn't work that way. As I said earlier, democracy doesn't wait for you to be bothered. It moves on as it rightly should. And therefore, the people who vote determine the direction of the country. They determine the mood, the tone, and the people who stay out don't get a say. And I, I, I want every American to feel the power of that choice so that no matter what happens, people aren't thinking, if I coulda, woulda, and maybe I shoulda. We all have that responsibility. And we all have to figure out what is happening where people don't want to exercise that. that. That has got me in a quandary, you know? I wonder what, what is it? What will it take for people to decide that it's worth it so I am, I am here today because I want to see what this country can do when they know what their power is. Because it doesn't matter what leaders you elect, if they don't have your vote behind them, there's only so much they can do. It is not about the leader. The power of our democracy is in us. The person that you're looking for is standing in your shoes. You are the person that can save yourself from this. We are, we are our heroes. We are our leaders. That doesn't change. And it doesn't matter who runs, it's on us. So, you all have your marching orders, right? And let me just say, Nevada, I love you. I know you're going to get this done. Election day is coming right around the corner. I want you all to take this energy 
and not just have this moment here with me, but to take this energy and run with it. There is a limit of time to get this stuff done. And this room here, if everybody in this, in this gym were fired up and motivated, wow, that's enough to make some real change. So let's make it happen. You guys are amazing. Thank you for taking the time out of your schedules. I love you all so much. Let's get it done, you all. Thank you.